everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for coming in tonight. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. Uh, thanks again, guys, for coming in, and thanks, replay, replay viewers, for watching. We are ready to sew the rose of my hourglass block, my sparkly hourglass block. Look at all the sparkles in, in all these fabrics. They're all shiny. They all have foil or glitter in it. <laughs> uh, and uh, we are going to sew the rose together tonight. So thanks again for coming in. Uh, we'll get started right away. I hope all you guys are having a great Friday. Uh, just so you know, I am giving away this quilt when I'm done and you have the chance to win it. So there is a sign up to win in the description box of this video. And uh, I will be announcing the winner when we're done with the entire quilt, which won't be too long from now, I don't think. And uh, I'll be announcing the winner, winner in our Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook. So be sure to check that out as well. Uh, thanks again, guys. I'm going to flip you around. We'll get going. Hello, Judith. Thanks for coming in. All right, let's do it. Right at the sewing machine right away tonight. Hi, Irene. Okay, let's do this. So I have all the bro all the rows. I have them all stacked. They are still labeled, and I think I'm going to keep them labeled until the entire thing is sewn together because like I said, the less I have to use my brain, the better. Uh, so I'm going to just start out with the first two. We'll do, we'll do, we'll sew rows one, two, and then three, four together. We'll sew them by twos at first because then we don't have to continuously sew onto a bigger and bigger piece. It'll be easier to sew smaller rows together. Hey, Rena. Hey, Linda. Thanks, guys, for popping in here tonight. So, okay. Row one first, row two underneath. I am going to flip the top row down, row one, so we can sew their seam together. And last night we pressed the odd rows one way and the even rows another way. And the reason we did that is so we can nest the seams together. Oh, yes. Hi, Harmony. I am still at it, still doing the live streams every night. So the reason we want these to nest together like this where the folds bump up against each other is that when we sew it together uh, our seams will line up perfectly so we can get some good points. The other thing I'm going to pay attention to when I sew is where these crosses are. Uh, I want to try and get right on top of those. I won't be able to see them all because they'll be on the other side as well, but I'm going to do my best to sew through those because that will make our, our triangle points line up as well. So, you know, at this one point, we have so many points. We have one, two, in this case, one, two, three, four, five points. And a lot of the other uh, ones will have an additional one. Uh, this just happens to be a solid, solid here. So all the things we are shooting for while we press, or while we, while we sew this together. I'm not going to use pins just because as long as I can hold the one, uh, the one nested seam together, once I get to there, then I'll just go to the next, get that lined up, and I'm going to just go one by one like that. But, you know, feel free to, to clip them all together or pin them all together. It does, you know, make things easier having it all pinned and ready to go. But I do like the idea of <laughs> not using pins if I don't have to. So, all right. I'm going to nest this seam together again, our first seam, and then line up the edges. And again, I'm going to keep, keep my labels on, on here. All right, let's do this, see how it goes. Got to scooch it up just a hair more. There we go. All right, here's my nested seam. You can actually feel them together here, so uh, that's what I'm aiming for. And I'm going to actually get my little stiletto out here as well. I'm going to kind of hold 
pull those seams together right here. That's that it's kind of like uh, acting as a pin for me. So here's where I'm aiming for that cross. Oh, you're giving your hourglass flex to your 16 year old granddaughter. And how sweet. Oh, you let her arrange the blocks too. Oh, how fun. How neat. I love, uh, you know, I, I work on projects with my mom and it's so fun uh, to kind of collaborate on them like that. That's super exciting. All right, again, I'm kind of aiming for this cross here. Some of my seams, you know, are not as good as others, so we're doing what we can as far as aiming for those, those little bits. They're not all gonna be perfect, because I didn't sew everything perfectly, but that's okay. We're going for having fun. And, you know, I, I'm still trying to match things up the best I can, but I'm not, I'm not letting it worry me too much, whether it's perfect or not. All right, let's get that scene together. I'm going to hold it there again. Aiming for that cross. All right, lining up the next one. nested. So this is the part where it all starts to come together as a real quilt, which is exciting. <laughs> we will have uh, a good start on getting this top done today. Almost done with the first row here. And here's my last nested seam. Let's see. There we go, butting them up against each other there. Good to hear. Thanks, Marianne. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I'm glad I can help out. All right, this is row one. I'm going to leave it on because I'm going to start sewing row two right away, but I do want to peek at it. Oh, and while we're at it, we can we can take this, this leader off. So let's, let's peek at these nested seams, see how we did. All right. So you can see here, I, I aimed for that cross and sewed through that cross the best I could. And all right, so here's our first seam. Hold on, I'm trying to flip it open here. And this will come across when it's pressed, but the nesting of the seam made these seams line up and the aiming for that, uh, that cross got all these angled seams lined up. So we did a decent job there. Eh, not too shabby. It's gonna be a hit and miss along the way here, but uh, I am trying to still get all these, these points to line up. But look, it's starting to be a quilt. Exciting. All right, so that was row one and two. Uh, since this quilt is smaller, will you do a live video of sandwiching the quilt? Uh, Gina, I think I will. I think I'll do a thing on it. Uh, I'll, I'll do the whole process of this. So I, I, I will sandwich the quilt. It might, uh, and what I mean by sandwiching the quilt, guys, if you, if you haven't done this before, is um, it's where we, it's the act of putting the top of the quilt uh, onto the, the batting of the quilt, which is that center fluffy uh, stuffing, basically, and then the bottom of the quilt. We need to, we need to gather those together 
so they can be held together before we sew it together, and uh, which is called basting. And uh, the like, you know, cute name for that is called sandwiching the quilt, putting those three layers together into a quilt sandwich. Uh, so uh, I, I've, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do that. I might not be able to do it at the table here. It'll probably be down over on the floor in the living room, but it is a size that we'll be able to do that. So sure, Gina, I will definitely be doing that. And that will actually be coming up pretty quick here because we will get this, uh, the top done, you know, relatively soon and then we'll we'll put the border on and then I think for the back of the quilt I think I'm just gonna do that one the same color as the border so that'll be pretty easy as well so we'll be getting through this quilt pretty quick all right rows three and four Here, I'll just show you guys over here again my little workspace here so I am again this is row three and row four I'm gonna flip row three down and that's the row we're gonna sew. Again, these seams will nest nest together. All right, so here we are. Again, I'm not really using pins, but you can feel free to uh, nest all these seams beforehand and pin it or use a wonder clip. And uh, it will probably make it go faster to sew. So once I get all these pairs sewn, you know, one and two, three and four, five and six, seven, eight, those are the pairs. Then I will start sewing those pairs together. Uh, and then we'll sew the final two pairs. Okay, we're set. So that's that's why I'm leaving my labels on, just because I'm, I'm sewing them and uh, there's still, you know, there'll still be four pairs. And I want to remember uh, which order those pairs go in, so I'm not I'm not being quick to take off those labels yet. I'm I'm gonna leave them on, probably right to the end, just because I need that visual reminder, just so I don't second guess myself during the process here. You know, late night sewing, that's when the brain starts to not uh, be your friend anymore sometimes. So the less I can use my brain and the more I can use my visual reminders, uh, the better. All right, I'm still kind of aiming for these, these points, although this one's pretty far down. I don't know. We will see how it goes. Overall, you're not going to see all the points that aren't perfect and all that. And the more accurate you get over time, uh, the more accurate all these points and everything will be. But I am doing the things to try and, and aim for it. So like aiming for that cross and, you know, trying to get my, my quarter inches working, measured out right and all that. Keep looking at you sewing and get confused by the hedgehog. Oh, so the hedgehog is, um, this was a tip that someone gave while I was working on the Splendid Sampler. It's, a po it's one of my business cards. And uh, the idea is, is that it's at my, my scant quarter inch mark, so the, which is the size that I want my seam to be. And uh, I can, uh, the nice thing about it is that it's, it's a physical thing. It's not just a piece of tape. So I can actually butt my fabric up against it and it will, it will stop the fabric. So uh, I have that physical barrier representing that, that scant quarter inch. And I don't know, it's really helped me improve my scant quarter inch over over the process of uh, that last quilt along, the Splendid Sampler quilt along. So it's still there, it's, it's hanging in there kind of, it's it's popping up here and there, but in general it's, it's still helping me out. All right, one more on this one and then we'll be at the third pairing. white fabric. Okay, last little bit here. Oh 
she uses an empty Starbucks card. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, a plastic card probably works better than a business card like this. Um, yeah, like a nice plastic uh, Starbucks card. <laughs> that makes sense. I like it. All right, let's get the next two rows. So normally I wouldn't necessarily stack my rows like this. I would have them all laid out, but I am working in a small space. So I, I, I just stack them up instead. And actually it seems to be working pretty well. So next two rows, make sure I'm putting them in order, five and six, and ooh, this is where we, we're going to get one of those nice, those fun extra squares in here. So all right, let's flip that down, grab that first seam, flip you guys back. All right, this row and one more, and then we can start sewing the bigger pieces together. I'm not going to press the pieces until I have the whole, the whole top, or not the whole top, but the whole, this part of the top done. Uh, I'll press it before I put borders on, basically. But I don't, I'm not going to press it in between. I don't think there's really any need for that. If you get really picky, oh, I'll talk about this first. So Janet, this is just, um, I was sent this as a, as a gift. It is a, it is a turkey, um, oh gosh, I always forget the name of these things. What are those things that you put the turkey legs together with? It's a turkey something. <laughs> I can't remember. I'll let me know, guys, if you remember what they're called. A turkey, it's um, uh, that pointy thing that you um, put uh, the the turkey parts together, but then it has just cute little beads on that have been glued into place. So, I mean, you could make this for, you know, a few cents, I'm sure. A skewer, well, no, not a skewer. I mean, it is like a skewer, but that's not, it's got a different name. No, um, oh gosh, I can't remember. We've been talking about it here uh, previously, but maybe I'll remember. A lacer, that's it, a turkey lacer. There you go, Gina. Uh, it's a turkey laster. You can buy them probably in a pack of 30 or something, who knows, uh, at a grocery store. But yeah, then it's just cute little beads that have been put on. I like this big flat bead because it's kind of like a, a little handle for me. Uh, so that's all it is. Uh, and you can, I mean, you can use a pencil or anything, but this actually really works swell. So that that's all it is. But yeah, I, I've used it a ton uh, since I've received it. I always have it right next to my sewing machine. If I need to help help uh, some fabric through the machine or like I'm using it here with the sharp point, I'm just kind of using it as a kind of a pin, holding it in place. It works awesome! Yeah, it's just, it's like an extra tiny little sharp pointy finger <laughs> that I could use. Like right here, I'm just helping the seam through with it. Thinking of lacing up the back of the turkey. There we go. Lacing up the back of the turkey. Yeah, I need to, I need to do one of those memory things where you picture a whole story. So I need to like, think of a turkey, like lacing up its tennis shoes or something. I'll probably never forget it now. I'm gonna think of a, a turkey lacing up his his sneakers. <laughs> and then I'll always remember that it's a turkey lacer. Have you guys heard of that? That kind of memory trick, making like really odd, odd stories to memorize memorize things. I'm trying to do that more often. <laughs> All right, trying to get these little seams together. There we go. A few more here. All right, 
two more and then we are done with this these two rows and we just have the one left then then we'll be on to putting these guys together into the bigger sections oh we're gonna start to see what this looks like i'm excited Oh, your mind would think of the picture. Think of the picture about your mouth would say a turkey tying his shoes. <laughs> I know I gotta think of a not a turkey tying his shoes. I gotta think of like like a, a turkey buying his shoes for the first time and he has to lace them up first. <laughs> That's what I gotta think of. Alright. So here are the last two. I'm gonna just Flip them together right away. Whoa! Down the floor. Tricky buggers. Slippery. All right. Rows seven and eight. Uh, putting them together. There we go. Matching up this seam. And I got my, I'm holding that, uh, that nested seam, and we're ready to go. Re-nest it. Turkey la lacing up her corset. Exactly. You can. The more interesting the story, the the uh, easier it is to remember in theory. Apparently, that technique is a really good way to learn languages. Like I, I listened to this podcast, uh, and the guy was uh hey he had the example of uh, uh the word vaca and i you know i don't speak spanish so i might be pronouncing that wrong but it's cow in spanish let me know if i'm wrong on that but this was his example so how he had yeah how he has people remember that or how he remembers it is a cow vacuuming and so <laughs> I'll never forget that that's, that's the Spanish word for, for cow is vaca because of the vacuuming cow. You out in the middle pieces and then wrap a string. Oh, you are actually lacing it like a shoelace with a, with a turkey. Oh, so, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. So are you actually, you're actually putting string on the back here and you're, you're actually like a needle going through it, lacing the, um, lacing the turkey. <laughs> I have never done that before. Oh, to lace up the cavity. Probably, right? <laughs> yep, not, uh, haven't made too many turkeys uh, before. At least not, you know, with all the fancy lacing and everything. Hey, Nancy! All right. Almost there. And I will leave this one on the machine and just take off the, the first two rows. So I can sew those together, and then I'll take off these next two rows and sew them. Ooh, this one might be a hair off, but oh well. Ooh, yeah, this is going to be way off. This square happens to be a whole lot bigger than the square underneath. I'm going to try and 
try and keep them matched up, but might be a little wonky on this one. All right, last little bit here. Okay, I'm gonna leave that right there. So, all right, now I'm gonna just move over here so we can see. I'm gonna snip off the first two pairings. So here's the first one uh, from the machine. Again, we are still having our numbers on the left over here. So this is rows one and two. I wanna see what it looks like, so I'm gonna kinda of lay it out. One and two. And next off the machine is three and four. I'm gonna leave the other one on the machine for now, just, you know, so I don't extra confuse myself. So, all right, we are gonna do the same thing here. So just double checking, three and four. There we go. Uh, our next, uh, next two rows. So uh, I will flip this over now and same exact thing, except for I got like just more excess down here. I am, this is row two and we're sewing it to row three. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing, gonna match up the, the seams, nest the seams together again, and we should be good to go. So let's do these two. Almost got to turn, you guys. All right. Just double check, I wanna make sure I'm sewing the right side. One, two, yep, three, four. There we go, nesting those first two. So we only have three more seams to sew on this, uh, the, the next pairing, and then the full thing together. So we'll definitely get through this tonight and uh, we'll press it if we have time yet tonight. And on Monday, we will work on the border. So we have to measure how much we'll need for the border and cut all that out. But then it, that should be a pretty quick job too. So I'm pretty stoked about that. And then once we do the border, we could cut fabric for the back and uh, for the binding right away too. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not positive what, how big I want to do the border yet. In theory, I was thinking kind of big, like I was thinking around like 12 inches or so around the whole thing just to make the quilt that much bigger. So, so the quilt feels more like a small lap quilt versus a baby quilt size. So adding a big old border would be a quick way to, um, quick way to make the whole thing bigger <laughs> is what, what my thought is. But we'll see. So uh, once we're done pressing this and laying it all out, uh, then we can kind of look at um, what size we think would look look good. I wanted to feel. Oops, just need some help. I want it to feel proportionate to the piece too. I don't want it to feel too small or too big. Um, so we'll kind of we'll kind of judge that a little bit. But in my head right now, I'm thinking about 12 inches. But we'll see. If I was leaving this as a baby quilt, I probably wouldn't even do a border. I'd probably do a cute back and uh, binding and, and be done with it. The binding itself is kind of like a little tiny border because uh, it still frames it up in, in one color if, you, if you're using one color of a fabric and not patchworking the, the binding together. But the binding itself does kind of frame it. But I do want to add... I do want to add some, some size to it, in theory, because I don't know, this, the colors on here don't seem super baby quilty. 
and I love me a lap quilt, so uh, I like having just little lap quilts everywhere that I can just grab uh, if I get cold. So I like making them. So I'm thinking small lap, lap quilt size. We'll see how it feels. All right, last seam here, and then we will uh, cut off the other two. Oh, I can't get the needle down. There we go. My needle, my uh, machine doesn't have automatic needle down like how some of the, the new machines have. All right, here are the other two. We're getting bulky over here now. Um, all right, this is five and six, I believe. Let's just uh, take a peek. I still like having the labels on here. Yep, five and six, so that's on the top. And here is seven and eight. I suppose I could have flipped all those off all at once, but I'm doing it now. All right, and then this is that piece that's still on the machine. All right. Let's see what we got over here. Five, six. Two, seven, and eight. Ooh, wow. Some of my seams are way off, but I think that's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's the nature of it. All right, so we will flip this down. And here is our first guy over here. All right, so we'll sew this one, and then it is just the uh, sewing the two together. Then we're then we got it. So after this part, I might take off all these labels, or I might just leave them on. Let's get the stiletto working for us again. Uh, the blocks are four and a half inches before I sew them together, and then they end up, once they're sewn in the quilt, they should be around four inches. Or they should be four inches, assuming that my seam allowance is, is good. So yeah, so four and a half when I'm making them, and uh, uh, four once they're sewn in the quilt. So in theory, this should be 36 inches by 32 inches without the border. Uh oh. Oh, I thought I might have broken the needle, but nope, we're good still. It is kind of a lot of seam allowance that we're sewing through on some of these triangles. We started out with eight inch squares when we uh, began. And I go through the whole process, so um, I would, if you want to make one, start at the beginning of these videos, which are on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and they're also here in the Penguin and Fish Videos uh, section of Facebook. Uh, and at the beginning, we go through the sizes and everything. To start out with. All right, I'm gonna seam this seam. I'm almost done. I can tell that uh, it, it's getting heavy. Like they don't things that want to move around as much. Um, I gotta kinda hold the sides to kinda help it along. Uh, it's a lot of, even this little quilt, it's a lot of fabric being moved compared to, um, compared to just doing a block. This will be 
the last nested seam here. And that is that. Oh, I still have to sew the, the two final things together. So the top four to the bottom four. So I'll need a leader here. So I need to take everything off the machine. Since the washing machine. Oh yeah. So we, we started out with uh, four, or we started out with six fat quarters, and we cut each fat quarter. Uh, so we had eight, um, eight, no four eight four eight inch squares. That's it. And uh, then the remaining we cut up into squares too that we added to this. All right. Here's my five through six half. Coming together, it's it's always amazes me how much it shrinks up uh, once you sew it together. Oh, and then my labels are on the side, so I'm happy I still have my labels on here. Look, it's almost together. All right, let's flip this one over, and there we are, good to go. Thanks, Holly. All right. After this, we'll take our labels off, and uh, I think we'll have time to press it still. Pressing um, finished quilts, or not finished, but like, you know, larger chunks of quilt like this is always so difficult for me on my tiny little ironing board, but we're going to give it a try. We'll just have to go bit by bit. Next up, let me get this in my lap here. Well, thanks, Janet. Yeah, it is coming together. Like, this is the point where you can finally see, you know, what everything looks like blended together. It's kind of just a, a picture in your head till, till this point, even though, you know, you can see it all laid out. But there's something finishing that happens when, once they're all sewn together. Every step you get done makes it look more and more complete. Which, you know, is obvious. It is getting more and more complete, but there's something about seeing it just that little bit further that is always kind of cool. Oh, and you guys, so stay tuned to your emails uh, on Monday. Uh, you should be getting a email that will show some of the next projects we'll be doing. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. So if you're not on my email list, uh, you can, I think I have a link in here, but I'll post a link in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group tonight too. Uh, kind of letting you know in case you're not on, on my main uh, my main newsletter. But I'm super excited about them. It is the designer series that I've been been talking about and we'll also be doing um, we'll also be doing some more embroidery. Oh you should do one. Uh, you should Nancy you should uh, start one. It is. It's fast. That's why I wanted to, to work on this project. I needed like a, I needed a fast quilt to uh, put, to just to like cleanse the palette of the, the splendid sampler, which took, you know, almost two years, so, <laughs> or a year and a half to do. I, I actually, I'm not done with it yet. Uh-oh. I think I might, uh, I think I might be breaking my needle here. Oh no. Good. Made it. 
I'm using kind of a thin needle. I'm using a size 70 needle and I'm thinking I should have done at least an 80 for this. I, I wasn't thinking that um, I'd be having all these seams. Oh, come on. But, ugh. But these seams are pretty thick. All right, I think we're stuck here. I'm gonna have to, uh, we're just, we just have a, like a really thick, really thick part that we're going through. Right at the end, of course, too, is when, when that happens. Yeah, it's just really thick. I'm gonna just try plowing through it again. We'll start back here. Um, All right, let's just give it a go again. Help it through. <sighs> All right, I think we're gonna make it. I might have bent my needle though. <laughs> I think we're fine. Uh, you think you would put a 10 inch border on the sides and 12 on the top and bottom? Oh, that'd be, that'd be kind of interesting. Um, that might, I'm gonna just go a little reverse again. So this will be fine. I, th I don't think, once we quilt that together, that's not gonna be a huge problem, that little seam. But yeah, my, my needle could be getting dull. And especially that we are using all that sparkly fabric uh, and fabric with that glitter through it too, that might be um, making my needle dull as well. So I'll probably change it uh, after we're done here before we move on to the borders and all the quilting and stuff for sure too. Alright, one more little bit and we're done. So I've kind of been working with uh, the pieces being longer than tall. So I, I've been working with nine uh, blocks apart by, uh, or nine blocks horizontal and uh, eight blocks vertical. Uh, I only did it that way because it kind of fit on my table better and it was easier for me to grab into rows. But I'm gonna probably rotate that so the quilt, I mean, it doesn't really matter what the top and bottom is, but I'm probably gonna rotate it so it's, so now I'm going to start thinking of the eight as the top and then nine down when I do my border and stuff. All right, guys, this is our whole thing. Microtech needles are what are used on batiks. Oh, that's interesting. I, I never heard of those before, Kathy. I will have to look into those because I do have, I did get those batiks too that I'd like to play around with. All right, guys, I'm going to take off, oops, I forgot about this guy. I'm going to take off all these labels and then we can take a look at this and press it. Don't need those anymore, it's all together. Oops. Clean paper everywhere. Oh, 60 by 64, that'd be a good size, uh, that'd be a nice lap quilt. All right, here we are. Yay! I'll uh, press that out quick, but let me lift you guys up a hair so you can see it. There we go, sewn together. You can kind of still see some of these extra squares that are going on here. I think I don't think we screwed any of those up. <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, let's press this and um, see how that goes. Get the ironing board down here. So since these are really fat seams, I'm wondering if it would be best to press it open. But what I'm what I'm used to doing is just pressing in one direction. So I don't know. I think I think let's just press into one direction uh, to get things going, and then I can decide on 
on opening the seams. I, I, I actually think I might have to open the seams because when I quilt it, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to quilt through such fat seams. So I think we might have to press the seams open, Ugh, which is such a pain, I think. Um, but we'll give it a go. I think my, my iron is still warming up a hair here. So yeah, I think we'll just do two seams at a time for half of the quilt. So I'm going to press down and then just to get them started and then I'll press them open from here to here. So it's just half the quilt in these two seams and then we'll move to the next bit and open up the seams and then the next bit and then flip it around. So this will take a little bit of time, but it's a good part of the process and uh, I'm excited to uh, see the front. We'll press the front flat too then we're done as well. Sparkles. So by opening the seam, we're going to reduce some of these big corners of bulk. And a lot of these corners are so bulky because we have all these triangles, all these seams going to them. So what did we say? Like, I think there's like eight different seams. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six, seven, eight seams coming together in some of these. All right, there we go. One little open seam. This again is the part where I think I'm almost done, but then I realize, oh, pressing all these seams is gonna take a long time. But then you realize that and then it's like, okay, so I'll just sit with it, it's part of the process. Some of these are super fat seams. So we're going to do what we can. I think I'd like to quilt it uh, diagonally. I think that would be kind of neat. Like I said, I was going to find, I was going to look for that, uh, I think I have some sparkly sewing thread. I think that would be kind of fun to use on this to go with our sparkly uh, sparkly fabric. All right, we kind of got an open seam going here. Let's move up to the next two. Yeah, we're just going to have to go two at a time here, I think. We will get there. pressing down to get started and then I'll press them open and we still have to do the, the other side of this too. Rotate it 180 degrees and do that side. I don't know there are any tricks for pressing the seams open. I don't actually usually press seams open, but in this case, I think it's a good idea. Actually, some of these really fat seams are hard to press open. It might be better if you just press in one direction. I don't know. We'll see. I can hear it. So much fabric in there. Alright, next up. Oh, that sparkly white is just so pretty. get the needle through. Oop. Just got in the pub here. <laughs> nice. In a pub watching some sewing. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I 
got three more seams down here. I think I might turn it and press the side of it and then flip it back around and, and press the other side just because I'm too curious. I want to see what it looks like. Oh, let's press down. by little, getting her done. One of these times I am going to attempt to do some free motion quilting again. Uh, on my list, uh, and I uh, think I might. I'll, I'm going to talk about that in my email a little bit on on Monday. But yeah, I'm going to at least see if my I can set up my machine for it, and we'll play around with with that a little bit. That's one thing on my list that I haven't uh, haven't explored too much yet, and would really like to. Just um, just all the pretty patterns and stuff you can do with free motion free motion quilting. All right, the last row on here. Then I will flip it around to the front and just kind of press this side. And then I then I have to rotate it and do, do the other half of this. Since I can only do like half on my half of my ironing board at a time. Okay, that is pressed open. Let's flip it around and I want to give the front a little press. Just that side that we already did. It's kind of, I feel like it kind of stretches it out, makes sure that the seams are really flat. Again, we gotta do this on the other other side yet, but I wanted to press the front. I like pressing the front. Oh, it looks like a quilt. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, there's one of our big squares. Not perfect at all the points, but I think the idea gets across. Another one of those squares. I love that fabric, that green. Green with the little silvery dots. All right, last little bit. So, and I think I'll probably just leave it here with you guys and I'll, uh, I'll press that other side open just so, you know. You guys don't have to sit for me pressing all that. I'm gonna do the same, the same thing with the other side. But let's take a look at, take a look at this. So we'll have one side pressed all nice. So it does actually make it feel a whole lot bigger right away. So here we go. So this is one side getting it done. Oh, you learned that free motion and a long arm in Portland, Oregon. Oh, nice. And now it's oh, it's time to do at home because the canvas is so much smaller to work on. That's true, yeah. It's a, you're more working in such a smaller space than on a nice long arm. So this one, uh, I've matched up the, the points pretty well. Oh, not really right down there. Here I'm way off, uh, but you know, it's good to have some weird points in a quilt, I think. It shows that a human, a human made it instead. Awesome, so I think I'm gonna leave it there with you guys. I'll flip you around. Uh, this side I still have to press, so I'll, I'll press that tonight, but I'll show you guys what this looks like with a, a person next to it so you can kind of see size. 
So, all right, I'm gonna flip you, flip you around. All right, hello again. So here we are starting to come together. Let me stand up over here. Here we go, it is a quilt. There it goes uh, about that high. Yay, one side, one half done. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need that big of a border really to make it feel like a lap quilt. So I'm, I'm glad about that. Yeah, maybe maybe 10 to 12 inches. I think I'll probably keep it uh, equidistant around, then it'll be still a rectangular quilt, which, which I like. Uh, We'll see. I'll press this up and uh, I'll lay it on the ground this um, over the weekend and I'll take a few photos and we can see what it looks like. I'll uh, lay down the the um, the back fabric or the, the border fabric with it and then we can kind of start judging sizes and stuff too. I'll take a few photos. So awesome. Thanks again, guys. We almost have a quilt. Super excited. Uh, uh, I will get this up on YouTube if you want to watch it again at Penguin and Fish Movies and it will stay here on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page. Again, if you guys are new, uh, please sign up uh, to win the quilt if you want the chance to win it. I have uh, the link is in this, this uh, description here and uh, also sign up for the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. That's where we're sharing our hourglass blocks and whatever else you're working on. And uh, that's where I'll, I'll announce the winner of this as well. So awesome. Thanks again, guys. Have a great weekend. Oh, and I will, I'm having that email go out on Monday with our next coming up projects. So I will put the link to sign up for that in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group as well if you're not already signed up, if you're not already receiving emails from me. So, all right, I will do that. Have a great evening, guys. I uh, will catch you on Monday. See you later.